Hello everyone, welcome to our ERWC 3.0 update video. We've made this video so that we don't all have to meet at the same time in the same place and you can watch this hopefully short video at your leisure. Um, my name is Stacy Roosboom and I will be joined by Monica Solis to go ahead and provide you with an overview of the ERWC 3.0 curriculum, how we will be implementing it in the next year, and uh, what changes you can look forward to. Here you see the updated timeline. Now, we had originally planned to have LEADS pilot various 3.0 modules and then provide us with feedback on which ones should be used so that we could jump into the 3.0 curriculum for the 2021 school year. As a result of the closure, though, we had to modify this plan. So knowing that things will be challenging and unknown for next school year, we wanted to make sure that we didn't burden teachers with having to teach a new curriculum while possibly trying out new methods of delivering content, maybe uh, blended instruction, maybe altered schedules. We don't know what's going to happen, um, but we want to make sure that teachers have a variety of modules to choose from. So both the tried and true 2.0 modules and some of the new ones from 3.0. We talked about this modified plan with the leads and they support it. Here are Dan Meltrager from Etiwanda and Christy Lemons from Los Osos talking about why they're in favor of the soft rollout. This is Meltrager from Etiwanda. I, I'm kind of in the same agreement with sort of the, the soft rollout camp. Uh, I think a little bit of the old hooked in with a, a little bit of the new, that would probably be an easier rollout for, I think, my team as a whole. So that's just, that's kind of my thoughts on it. All right. Excellent. Anyone? Last chance? I, I was going to add. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm in agreement with what everyone said. I know at my site, you know, we're not resistant to. 3.0 it's just the units are not available and we haven't had the opportunity to see what we could even realistically choose from for a cohesive semester or even school year so I'm in agreement with the um, soft opening which I think we should have been planning from the beginning once we realized the units were not going to be done so I'm in full support of that so in front of you, you have the ERWC 3.0 requirements. So once again, I'd like to remind you that we are not full ERWC next year. We're having a soft rollout, but eventually these will be the requirements that you need to fulfill. So go ahead. You can pause this and take a look at it, and we'll be referring back to it while we go through our unit. This is the semester one booklet overview. Unlike in the past, uh, where you had four booklets, this year we're able to provide you with two booklets, and you'll get the first semester booklet before first semester, and then you'll get the second semester booklet in the middle of first semester. Um, we are going to use this time to go over the, each one of these units. So the very first document that you see in there is called What is ERWC 2019? This is replacing the old 2.0 introducing students to the ERWC letter. The leads have reviewed it. They think that it's a good resource that can be shown to students or parents even. And then Michelle Dane from Montclair suggested that we put in that second item that you see, the ERWC art. She thinks that it's a good idea, um, that it can be helpful in showing students visually how they're going to be starting with the professional text and then progressing through the module with a variety of activities and then ultimately creating their own text. The rest of the group agreed and so we are going to include that in there as well. Uh, the editing pretest. So as of right now, it is still in there, but please know that we are considering removing this from the booklet. So if you use it, if, if you want it to stay in there for the upcoming school year, then please show up to the meeting on Thursday to discuss why you think we should include it for this coming school year. 
Next up is the portfolio project. And basically what this is, is you'll have two portfolio projects, one at the beginning of the year and one at the end of the year. And these modules are new to the 3.0 curriculum. Um, here's Lily Reyes telling us about uh, what the portfolios are and how she feels about it. Um, so the first portfolio um, kind of just breaks down um, the purpose of ERWC um, and the kids um, set up goals in that introductory portfolio, um, which is really nice. And then we kind of um, circle back to the portfolio just to make sure that they're meeting the, the goal, meeting the goals that they set um, early on in the year. Um, and then the last portfolio, you just go back and really um, do a check with your students and the students evaluate the entire year. Um, on did they achieve the goals and what they thought of the modules. So um, both were really good. Um, I think it's really simple. It's almost like a, just a survey. In a, um, like it starts as a survey of what you know and what you wanna know and what you're gonna learn and it ends as more of like a, did I learn those things? So I think it's kind of, it's fairly simple. Okay. So the next item is what's next. This is the 3.0 updated version of that module, and it's very similar to the 2.0 one. That is followed by the first mini module. So you may remember that three mini modules are required for the year. Uh, they are shorter modules. They can be used to either introduce a full length module, or you could even teach a mini module in the middle of a full length module. And here's Lily again to share what she likes about this particular mini module. I really like the mini modules. I really feel like it broke up the larger modules um, where we could just focus on one thing at a time. Um, the larger model is definitely more broad with different things that we're focusing on at once. So I really actually enjoy them. They really did provide like a really good breather and for the kids too, you know, so um, I think they're really good. Yeah. Okay. Next, we have the rhetoric of the op edge page and the racial profiling unit. And so these modules are the ones that you've had before. These are old modules. They will not be available next year, but we put them into our packet so that you can use them if you want um, to use them. They're safe. You've done them before. If you want to get rid of them and replace them with the other ones, that's fine too or mix them up, whatever you wanna do. They are, they are there and they are available for you. The next new module is called Fake News and Bias. And so um, this is another one of our issue modules. And here is Jenna from Rancho, Monica, and Dan from Etiwanda again, telling us about fake news. Um, who had taught it in first quarter and said it was really good there. And I was doing it with 1984 because we were already midway through the year. So I just chose that one to pilot, but my agreement is yes, it should be in the beginning. That's fine. Okay. Excellent. Thank Part of that. the reason uh, why we also included it there is because it's an election year. And so we figured first semester is going to be when those ads are going and hopefully a big chance for some teachable moments and, you know, real world connections to, to the curriculum. Any other comments or questions about fake news and bias? Christy. It's kind of an extension of the rhetoric of the op-ed page, really, in a lot of ways. So all the rhetorical tools that you teach as part of the rhetoric, you can piggyback on those with the fake news deal. The next module is the value of life. Now, you probably see the asterisks on it, and that is to remind us that if the new one comes out and it is scheduled to come out sometime this spring, we will be replacing it with the 3.0 version. So basically it is the same, um, but the article by Tanit was removed, but it was replaced with some new great articles according to teachers who have looked at it. That is followed by language, gender, and culture. It is also now the 3.0 version. And we wanted to let you know that the schools that are piloting it have done so, uh, have paired that particular module with Othello, and they really seem to like that pairing. Okay, and to follow up with that, um, during the semester, you'll probably want to include at least one book or one play. And so the plays have to be a Shakespeare play. So you have to choose Hamlet or Othello. And like Monica just said, uh, a lot of schools, or three schools, have had a lot of success 
pairing um, language, gender, and culture with Othello, and they really like Othello. If you have not put in your purchase with your librarians to purchase Hamlet or Othello for the upcoming school year, that's something you wanna make sure um, is happening. And that's a site by site um, choice. So discuss that with your teams. Um, as for the books, we have the same books that we've had before, 1984, uh, Monica helped me out, um, Into the Wild, uh -huh. um, you know, Brave New World. So we have all of Thank those you. are still on there. Um, there are a lot of new additions. Some um, schools are choosing from the ninth grade, 10th grade or 11th grade ERWC versions have um, more diverse choices. So they've just added one called The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, which is about a boy in Africa in Malawi. Malawi. And uh, he builds a wind tur turbine, self-teaches himself, um, and it's really good. Um, I've started it, I'm about halfway through. Um, they also have The Distance Between Us, which is being used by a lot of the junior teachers, so make sure you don't compete with them. Uh, curious incident. The Curious the yeah, but that's not a diverse. Oh, program. that's true. Yeah. Uh, curious incident of a dog at in the middle of the nighttime. Mm -hmm. That one is a new book that you could use as well. That follows a um, special needs kid. I think he's um, on the spectrum. On the spectrum. Yeah, autistic. And he, uh, it's a murder mystery. A lot of um, students have liked that one. You can use Absolute True Diary of a Part Time Indian. Or there's one more distance between uh, things fall apart. And so those are all your choices. And that's something that's um, a decision made by your team. Once again, you can stick with Into the Wild or 1984 this year, but we would hope that you would eventually include a more diverse um, topic. And then the last issue module is on leaving and on staying behind. And this module is about immigration and um, both Christy Lemons from Los Osos and Michelle Dane thought it would fit really well with, um, with the uh, language, gender, and culture. Uh, let's hear from them. Yeah, that should, I think that should be first semester because isn't that one on immigration? And with it's so. an election year, that would be yeah. really appropriate for our first semester. Yeah, and it goes in LTC. Yeah, it all goes together there. Uh huh. Yeah, and then if anybody wanted to do the distance between us, which we're hoping possibly to pilot, yeah. that could fit really nicely for a semester. Yeah. So then we want to make sure that we leave that one there. Correct. Thank you for joining us and viewing our video that Monica and I put together. Uh, we put this together so that you would not have to spend an hour with us during a meeting going over this. But if you still have questions, we have an opportunity for you. So we are looking forward to connecting with you if you still have questions. And if you want to review any of the information that you saw in the slides, here's the bit.ly for you to do so. All right. See you later.